Have you ever had a dream? A dream of creating a world straight out of your own imagination and then living in it? I admire people who do, and that is what Carlo Marchiori has done in Calistoga, in California's wine country. Carlo is a Venetian artist, a large-scale muralist, a sculptor, a painter, and a dreamer. And this is his dream. He calls it Katoga. It has taken him 25 years to indulge himself in what he calls My Madness, which now covers five acres. Carlo says, I think of the past and the future as two mirrors between which I stand, precariously balanced on now, an ephemeral state that in another second will already have turned into then. Now demands constant attention, commits me to immediate concerns. Carlo has invited me for a visit between these two mirrors, where he will take you also on a visit into his world of the eternal mirror. And here we are. You're welcome to Katoga. Please. Anyway, after a while, 
The floor is also painted uh, on this, this is on mesonite and then varnish. The frescoes again are painted on canvas and then sort of applied to the walls. You know, when I came here, all of a sudden, when I had to face the project of retirement home, I said I wanted to do a sort of recreate. The prototype that is sort of is in the Veneto area, you know, where I come from, this Palladian Villas. It was a bit of an, uh, an attempt, you know. Uh, but uh, I like history, and I like to sort of reinterpret it, and uh, I know I would have enjoyed uh, recreating, and at the same time, I was put on this sort of like, on the challenge of sort of trying to recreate something, but I didn't want to do it too academically and too pedantic. And I wanted to do it with a little bit of sense of humor, someplace where I could live in comfortably, you know. I mean, to have a villa, I mean, you've got to have the servants to polish the silverware. But this is a villa where you know that you had to sell the silverware to pay the, the, the taxes. <laughs> and so I enjoy it because it's, it's sort of, it looks, uh, like grandeur, but it's not, it's very practical that I live in, you know, with my dog. And after a while, I don't even see the fresco there, so I'm like. And uh, this was one of my another another one of my uh, nightmare idea. I thought it would turn into this this bare room. It used to be, you know, um, white walls. I thought I'd turn it into a cage. I have a think about cages, you know, it means a sort of security. So I turned into a cage with big chicken wires, and then I got to sort of to give the idea of uh, to. So you can think you are you 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 become a bird. I had to put a uh, ominous confrontation there on the out, outside the cage. The cat, and here there he is, scaring the the guests. Here is a guest room. But I think you know they have their own nightmares once they turn the lights off. Painting around, and now I'm sort of uh, out of a new phase in my in my style. And this is uh, a little bit of an abstract idea, and the theme is head-on collisions. I'm interested in movement, and I like to express the idea that speed, which is a sort of like a concern, 
and uh, an obsession in the American culture. And here again, my fascination with the Indians. And I done a series of paintings on to the, about the American Indians when I was in Canada, and I brought some of it with me here. And plus, you know, the amount of uh, deer after I had collected on flea market hunting, I sort of concocted this sort of idea of sort of North American Indians. Uh, items and uh, subjects and uh, it's sort of fascinating anyway because Indians are always they were always in the, my mind Harry to, to look more like an Indian I should be shaving my beard but anyway there it is they're real buffalo horns you know and uh, you know Indians and, and uh, feathers this is an eagle feathers you know they're, that I, I sort of collected, and it's really, you know, very important in Indian culture. But here, unfortunately, is something else I found in a flea market. It is from Cameroon, but I sold it to the Indians. They loved it anyway. They enjoyed it. As this is, this is from Thailand, but I, read, I, I gave it to the Indians. Every afternoon, promptly at four, Carlo walks his dogs, Lola, Togo, and Pepe, around his five acres, visiting the various follies that he has made. Come on, Pepe. Pepe, up. Up, up, Pepe, up. Up. Pepe is blind, you know. Mm -hmm. Come, Pepe. Up, up. Up, Pepe. Up. Oops, Pepe. Come on. Here we are at the grotto of the Abalone Grotto. And uh, it was a, quite an undertaking because uh, I used this rubble that the excavating company gave me a truck by the truckloads, you know. And so we used this to do this uh, a little bit of a uh, scale down version of the Pantheon in Rome. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I guess everything is getting overgrown. Pepe, come on.
We found the uh, peace and harmony. They sort of like uh, stayed there uh, always and, you know, always cried for us. And um, I'm glad I did this because it sort of uh, is expresses my me, inner me, you know. And I don't have to explain myself too much. People see it and they understand that they sort of, uh, you know, they're amused. And so that's me. And so I, I right away I know, I am, I, you know, that's my... Uh, my and passport entry to them, yeah. and they accept me. Also, you know, here, I mean, if I left Italy and wherever I would went everywhere, it was a sort of a shipwrecked. But I found myself this little island, and I put myself together as five acres. I'm very happy here. And uh, sometimes, I, when I go out from here, I, I sort of, I, you know, I, I don't, I feel, I don't feel quite secure. I get a big city with traffic and things going on a lot. The soil here is very bad, it's black clay, so in order to grow some olive trees, I have to uh, do some retaining wall and put some, bring, bring in truckloads of dirt. And anyways, I had the retaining walls, I thought I'd go on to some sort of Doric architecture. I did attempt it anyway. And uh, it was a little bit of a struggle because I, you had to get the right proportions and all the right uh, details, you know. So I managed a little bit because I, you know, I was sort of concerned. I didn't want to make a mistake in cement and have to live with it forever. Here's a Doric temple. Oops. Okay. I had the possibility of sort of get a term of water here in Calistoga because we are, let's say, conveniently close to hell. But uh, anyway, I got a, a hot well here and the water I got at 95 degrees. Of course, you know, I had to stage it up in, stage it all up in uh, Roman ruins with the tubs and the, and the, the Venus spewed water and everything else. And um, you know, we have a hot tub in the Roman days. The same thing like my family, you know, there's a, oh, there goes Carlos again, you know. <laughs> so, um, it's, I'm compelled to do, you know, if I have these little crazy ideas, I sometimes, I, I remember that if they bug me too much, I have to realize them, you see. <laughs> and that's the danger. Fortunately, now, with the years, I'm beginning to forget quite a few of the, of the possible ideas. And anyway, however, I did it sort of like, a, I like, it's sort of like a, a therapy, you know, that you know, I have to keep busy, I enjoy being busy, I enjoy it. Otherwise, I think one day after the other, it would be a boredom to me, and I hate to be entertained by the movies or even by music or anything. I just, I, I know how to entertain myself. <laughs> This is my third 
dome structure that I have in, the, in my five acres here, you know. And uh, it's inspired by Piranesi with all the rubbles that rubble, the, the Roman fragments that he had uh, recorded in his engravings. And so I, I assemble a lot of uh, uh, fragments, which we, we make, it's all made, you know, it's by molds and molding it and all. And so the dome inside here is holding all the dirt from the pond. We excavated from the pond and we buried this building under dirt, you see, to make it look like a sort of a, an old Roman tomb or whatever you would like to, to believe it to be. And uh, over which I will grow trees and, you know, to make it look sort of wild and abandoned and uh, lost in times. This is the kind of, uh, I like ruins uh, because they sort of, they're very suggestive and they're very, well, not easy to make. They sort of, you, you, you don't have to build their complete Chinese wall, a section will do and you're happy and that will give you the idea. Tito Alba, the Latin name for barn owl. Uh -huh. Why owl? Because it oh, got to be that, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. another story. Uh, next to the house we have the, the Greek garden. The Greek garden was good for tomatoes for a while, then it became, it was good for artichokes, and then the artichokes are taken up, uh, demolished. I'm ready to plant trees on top of this uh, situation here, to, so that you will find it, it, it would look very, call it romantic, and sort of you know, taken over by nature and by time, which is the best way. And also, I don't have to take care. It calls for very little maintenance, you know. I don't want to be preoccupied with maintaining a mm -hmm. golf course-like mm -hmm. garden, you know, where everything yeah. has to be clipped down. Yeah. I consider this one of my most successful sculpture because it was improvised. We had some stones here, I threw them together and then we mounted this rack of uh, antlers that I got at the flea market and I sort of uh, fastened it to this head which I had to sculpt a little bit, you know. And so I'm glad that the, the, uh, the antler, the idea of the antler went back to the original belong, where they really should belong. Because for a minute I was tempted to tur turn them into handlebars for a modified <laughs> Harley Davidson. <laughs> No. Oh my god, I got the top. Okay, you've seen my house and like and it's time to say ciao. And before I say Ciao, goodbye. I want to tell you what ciao means. In Venice, in the 18th century, the, the, it was a form of salute, a salute that you would say to a superior, I am your servant, I am your chavo, I am your slave, whatever is a formal, you know. And so, chavo vostro, I am your, I am your slave, got contracted to chavo, ciao, ciao. See? Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>